Hi, this is Tony, and we're back on the bench. And this evening, we're going to be doing a walkthrough service here on a favorite conventional reel of mine. So this is the Pen Mag 10. Uh, it's, it's everything I look for, really, in a conventional reel. It's, uh, it's mag-tuned, and so it's got a magnet inside. Uh, it's, it's got two ball bearings, one on each side here. And it's also got the uh, direct drive... Uh, lever feature here uh, so that you know you can save your drag stack if you're fighting a big fish uh, it's a level wind uh, design of course uh, but yeah I just I love this reel so you know we're, we're going to be getting into it here and just going through all these take apart steps the cleaning points lube points all those things uh, so you know if you have this reel or if you're thinking of purchasing this reel then you'll know a little bit about what it's about in this video so Penn started off with this series in the early 80s, and the 10 actually lasted all the way up until around 2002 in that area. And it, uh, you know, it, it had a good run, and it was very popular during that time. You saw a lot of these out there on the water. So, you know, it's it's all pretty typical Penn, you know, design, you know, for, for these uh, generation of reels here. You know, we've got some outer screws that need to come out here. And then it's got a big brother also, uh, which is the 210, which is kind of the equivalent size to a, a Pen 209. The 10 here is equivalent to the uh, 9 uh, Peerless. And I actually uh, just put out uh, another video on that, uh, you know, that comparison between the nine and the and the ten here, and and there's quite a few differences between the two. Roughly, they're about the same size, uh, but internally they have some different components and and parts and whatnot. So it, it it's definitely a good investment, you know, if you're looking to. To have you know just a little bit more uh, features in a reel, and you know this reel is great you know just for some light shore casting or you know for some bottom fishing or even light trolling I would say really it's it's good for all of those all of those kinds of fishing. I specifically like to use this one for striper fishing myself, so. Yeah, I'm finally getting around to servicing this this reel. This particular one happens to be my own personal reel, so I wanted to do a video on it here. Okay, so now you know we've got our whole handle side off here, so it's pretty simple. You know, we're going to take our spool out. We're going to take our our level wind drive, our worm drive out here. Okay, and we're going to go through all these parts and pieces in here bit by bit. Okay, but the first thing you want to do is just do a, look, a quick inspection in here and you kind of want to clean up in here the best that you can. Now in order to get to the gear uh, that drives the, the worm drive, which is underneath here, you need to actually take this plate off, okay, in order to get to that. So in order to be thorough, we're going to take out all these screws as well. Okay. We've got three screws and three frame posts here. And then we've got two screws down at the bottom going into the, the stand mount here. Okay. And I do believe that you could get either a saltwater stand mount or a freshwater stand mount for this particular model. This happens to be a, a saltwater mount. And really, the biggest difference just has to do with uh, the shape of the of the base down here, so it can fit into a certain size rod. Okay, so once you have that out, you should be able to take your your ring out, clean that up real good, the best that you can. 
okay? And then we've got all of our innards in here. And basically all that you need to do at this point is you're gonna pull gently this, this gear out here, okay? You're gonna clean it up, okay, with a brass wire brush or a toothbrush, okay? Spray it with some WD-40, get it real nice and clean. Okay, again, this is a walkthrough service. I've actually already serviced the reel, uh, but now I'm just taking you through all these uh, steps here uh, just so that, you know, you can see uh, the process of what's involved. And then at this point, you want to take some real grease. I'm using Pen Precision Blue Grease. Okay, and just put a little dab of that in the teeth right there. You don't need to overdo it. Okay, but just enough. Okay. And you want to clean up this housing here, spray some penetrating oil in there, uh, some multi-purpose lubricant, clean it up the best that you can. Uh, you know, inspect this idler gear here. This is a plastic gear, and sometimes these teeth do crack. That is a weak point, unfortunately, in this reel. Uh, you know, but you can get that in pretty much a lot of the, the level wind reels that are made this day and age. So... Uh, you know, once you have that all, you know, uh, greased up, you can put that back in. You don't need to bother taking the idler gear out if it's, uh, if it's intact okay. And this is a plastic gear once again, so there's no real need to, uh, you know, grease that up per se. Okay, now here you've got your uh, ball bearing. And, you know, you want to confirm that it's turning. And what you can do is you can just take a screwdriver and just gently turn it with that screwdriver. If you really have to force it and work at it, that bearing might need some attention. And what you can do is spray that multi-purpose lube in there and let it work its way in. Wait for it, you know, maybe come back in an hour and, and try turning it again. Okay, assuming that you can get it turning, then you're just gonna flood it just with a little bead of some real oil. I'm using Pen Precision Oil in this case. Uh, you can use real X. Just make sure that they're oils and greases that are meant for fishing reels. I say that in all my videos, pretty much. Okay, a little bit of blue grease right here on the clicker tongue. Okay, and that's pretty much it. You're going to put your ring back into position, like so. Okay, and then you're going to line up your holes and make sure that, that you've got them lined up with the right holes. When you do this okay and then don't forget to hose down these screws uh, with a little bit of multi-purpose lube or some real oil on these threads right here you can do either or uh, you just you want to keep these threads intact okay and then we've got two uh, shorter screws that are going to go at the base here And these can be a little tricky to start sometimes, so just take your time. Get a little turn in there. But yeah, there's not a lot of these out there actually. Um, you know, if you go on eBay, you know, you might find one or two but there's just not a lot. So they're a relatively rare piece now. There are some parts available, but not all parts are available. So that's just one little thing to note. You know, if you're in need of parts, you know, you might end up seeking out a parts reel. We're just going to build these these frame posts back into position here, like so. Okay. So that's pretty much it for that section right there. Now what we're gonna do here before we get too far along, you wanna take some 4 steel wool to these uh, shaft, the shaft here on the spool, okay? And then I'm gonna take some of that blue grease back to the shaft, and then also on these little uh, teeth here on the, on the gear, there's a little gear right here. You want to make sure that you hit that and clean it up real good too, okay? Don't be afraid to, you know, kind of overdo the cleaning, so to speak. 
There's really no such thing as things being too clean. Okay, and then we're gonna, we're just gonna put that spool back in here right now so that we can say that we're just done with that whole part of the reel for the most part with this as the exception. So we've got our, our worm gear and a pawl right there. And what you're gonna have to do here is you need to take a little stubby screwdriver and you need to loosen up that screw and under the screw is where the pawl is. And the pawl is basically just a fork. It's got these two little teeth there, okay? And, you know, it, it digs into these slots in the worm gear, okay? So, as always, you want to clean up all these pieces and parts, all right? Take a toothbrush to this and some multi-purpose loop. Clean it out really, really well, okay? And then you're going to insert it back in here. Make sure that your paw is clean. Now, if the teeth on this are chewed up too much, it might need to be replaced, okay? So you just need to inspect, all right, and make sure that, you know, you can see the condition of it. You know, this one is still intact. You know, I'm probably going to try to pick up a spare one just for good measure one of these days, just so I have it on hand. Okay, and then you're going to place that back in and turn this screw. Okay, now at this point, you need to be very gentle doing this, okay, because you need to get those forks back in the groove, okay, and sometimes you have to slide this a little bit one way or the other to get that to work, okay, and you'll know when it's there, okay, because you'll be able to turn it just a few more turns, okay, so you do that. Okay, and then it should be able to spin nice and freely through there. Okay, take your real oil, do a little run of real oil through there. You can do grease too. I'm not a big fan of grease on, on worm gears like this though, personally. Okay, so at that point, these pieces are ready to go back into position here. And it's kind of hard to keep all this together. I'm going to attempt to get this back in place, and hopefully it'll stay there, but if it doesn't, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Just something like that, okay? We're just going to put that off to the side for right now, and we're going to focus on this part here. Okay, so typical design, we've got four bridge screws here, and we're going to take those out. Level wind reels are usually a little harder to work on just because of that part of the mechanism right there, that worm gear drive. They're just extra pieces and parts that you have to line up just right. And also note, when you take out all these screws, don't be afraid to put them in the tray here and you know hit them with some, some WD-40, some multi-purpose lube. I happen to be using some CRC power lube that I like a lot. Uh, the, you know, there's products made by Liquid Wrench or, uh, you know, Seafoam Deep Creep. You know, there, there's all different kinds of products out there. It doesn't necessarily have to be anything super expensive or high tech or anything, but you want it to, to really break down any of the rust or grit and things of that sort. I'd say probably WD-40 is probably the staple for most folks that are, you know, doing that, that kind of work probably. Okay, so now we got the bridge screws out. We're gonna take our inner ring off, okay? And there's the magnet right there. So this has got one magnet on the inside and what that magnet does is when you're free spooling and you're casting, that magnet uh, hits the uh, the side of the spool here and it applies just a, a certain amount of tension to the spool to help prevent backlash, okay? So all these pieces and parts are going to kind of fall apart on us here, of course, and that's okay. But you're going to take all these out, pinion gear, pinion yoke, eccentric jack, all these pieces come out. Okay, I'm going to get all those out there. Okay, and then we've got our, our main gear. Now, this is what I was talking about. This is a really, really nice full-size main gear for sure. Okay, and it's, it's pretty nice to have that on a reel this size. 
Okay, we're gonna take that off. You got a hard uh, a fiber washer hiding underneath that main gear. All right, so this is your bridge assembly right here, and there's a bridge sleeve, and then a dog and a dog spring, and you don't want to lose these, okay? Now, in order to get the uh, bridge sleeve off, you have to hit, tap that pin out, and I've got a separate video on the YouTube channel that you can check out on this particular process. I'm going to do it for the sake of being thorough in this video here so you can see. Uh, but th this is often something that's overlooked in real maintenance. And so you want to take that 4.0 steel wool to this shaft, clean it off really well. Okay. And then you're going to go back with a little bead of oil there. Take a Q-tip and clean out the inside of this shaft. Okay. Once again, I've already done all this. And so I'm not going to take the time to do more of that cleaning per se, because it's already been cleaned. All right, but you can put that back on. You got that tiny pin that you're going to put back in place. Okay. All right, and it should be uh, good to go at that point. All right, but you want to scrub out any sand or dirt or anything of that sort and get that all cleaned out, you know, when you're doing this. Okay, now we've got our drag stack. Okay, we're going to take all these washers out one by one. Sort them out here so that you can see what they look like. All right, clean off your your main uh, gear really well. Get all the teeth cleaned out with that brass wire brush or toothbrush. Spray it down with WD-40. Get it really nice and clean. Okay, hard washer goes back on first, then your main gear. Okay, and then we've got all of our washers here. So this is an HT100 kit. All right. And what I like to do is use some Cal's Star Drag Grease on these washers. I'm just going to do just a, a tiny little dab just to kind of demonstrate here. You just want to work it in on these washers here ever so gently. All right, just a light film. All right, you don't want to get complicated with it and heavy. That's not the point of Star Drag Grease. But this helps prevent cracking and 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 fatigue you, you want to make sure that the metal washers are cleaned off really well so do that and then you're just going to go back and sequence keyed washers right here okay and then you've got a tension washer that goes on top okay now comes the part where you apply some blue grease to your your main drag or uh, main gear okay and you don't want to overdo this because you don't want that grease seeping down into that drag stack okay because it'll make it slip and you don't want that okay so just apply that grease so gently okay Spray this out with some multi-purpose lube, get this cleaned up really good, and then once again, we're going to go here on the eccentric roller with some blue grease, a little bit of blue grease right here for the direct drive roller, okay, and then check your bearing, and make sure that your bearing is turning freely, okay. Make sure that that's spinning around real easily, okay. And again, if it's not, spray some multi-purpose lube in there. Let it sink in for a little while. Okay, don't just, you know, put it all back together. You know, make sure that it's turning because if it's fused or rusted or something like that, you might actually need to replace it. Okay. And that's, that's part of the smoothness of this reel. And if you compare this to like the number nine, Peerless, I mean, they're, they're both great tools but you will notice a difference between the Mag-10 and the Pure, uh, Peerless 9. I guarantee you, you will notice the difference. Okay, so clean out all these pinion gear teeth with that uh, brass wire brush. Get all these surfaces really nice and clean. A little bit of blue grease on your pinion yoke. And then also on the pinion gear, for that matter. I'm just going to do a little bit here. Just so you can see. All right, and then you're going to place that back into position like so. 
okay? Make sure that your uh, eccentric jack is really nice and clean. Okay, we're going to put that back in, and it should just kind of snap and, and go back like that, okay? All right, so now we're ready to put our, our main gear set back into position like so. And I find that it helps if you kind of do it upside down here almost like so. And you just need to kind of snap that into position. Hear that little snap, that's usually a good sign. Okay. And while we're here, we're just going to do a little bit of blue grease right here on the eccentric jack. Okay, because that's going to go up and down like so. Okay. And then we're just going to go back with our screws. And note that these two top screws are different from the bottom ones. Don't forget to do your little bead of oil or some WD-40 on these screws. Fully threaded screws on the bottom. Partially threaded screws on the top. Okay. Don't over tighten these. You don't want to crack the side plate. Again, this reel isn't made in production anymore, so you know if, if you need parts, you might have a hard time finding them. So just use caution when you're doing that. Okay, and then just gently do a quick snug on these. You know, kind of like a eighth of a turn to a quarter of a turn at most. Okay. Okay, and that's usually a good sign right there. Okay. We'll put our plate back into position. Also, before you do that, uh, you can either do grease or oil right here. I'll do just a little bit of grease right there. Okay, so it should look something like that. I'm going to line up your holes, of course. Like that. Okay, and now comes somewhat the tricky part, is getting all this lined back up again. Okay, and you just need to take your time with it. Okay, so that's all in place there. Sometimes it, it takes a little while just to get it to snap in just right, but you need to get the shield lined up in the appropriate holes, okay? And this wire needs to line up in the slot on that post right there. And then we're going to go back, and we're going we're gonna to put all these screws back into position one by one. You've got two longer ones that go at the base down here where the housing is for the main gear and drag stack. I'm having a hard time starting some of these. Normally if you can get one started then the rest kind of come into play pretty quickly. Now you don't want to snug any of these down just yet until you get them mostly threaded because you might need to make a little adjustment along the way. Okay. And then what I like to do is I like to kind of crisscross and go back and forth 
And that way the, the load is kind of balanced, more or less. And then just double check your work and make sure that these are snug. Okay. Put the sleeve back in. We got our, our star wheel here. Put the handle back. Then you got a handle nut that goes on top. Gently snug that down, and you got to get the groove lined up with your with that hole right there for your your set screw, okay? Which we have right here. A little bead of oil on that set screw doesn't do any harm. I have snapped off those heads before, uh, just because the threads get rusted and whatnot. Okay. The only other thing I'm going to do is double check the alignment of this frame post up here because it's got that groove that this wire needs to rest in here. It's kind of hard to see, but it's got to slide back and forth there really easily. So sometimes you can just turn the reel once that's loose, and then once it's in the groove, then just kind of hold the post and gently turn that screw okay okay so we're going to try this out make sure it's all working right okay free spools working fine make sure that the drag is working okay yeah that's really nice and smooth Make sure the direct drive is okay, and it is. So there you have it. That is the Pen Mag 10 all serviced up and ready to go. So thanks again for watching. This is Tony with Back on the Bench. If you like the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, please do subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification button. And we'll see you next time.